What's going on guys, Louise here. Today we're covering Hypermax tutorial HM1030, organizing a model. We're going to learn how to create geometry and elements and organizing them into components, renaming, reordering, deleting them, stuff like that. And this is a big step towards keeping track of our model and also on manipulating it better so let's get started. Let's start by retrieving our good old pal bumper.hm. Then we create a new component by right clicking on the model tree, create component. We could also go to collectors, create components to do that. And give it a name, geometry, and change its color to say yellow. And we can see that geometry is bolded, indicating it is the active component. Now let us create two lines and put them in different components. Go to the geom page, then lines and linear nodes. Pick two nodes and click create. Then a yellow line appears, same color, same color as the geometry component. If we want to put a line in the rigid component instead, we have to first make it the current component by going to the model tree, right clicking on it and selecting make current. Now rigid is bolded and it is the active component in our status bar over here. Now create another line, go to geom, lines, linear nodes, pick two other nodes and create. We see that now the line is red, same color as the rigid component. You may want to move all of your geometry features into your newly created geometry component. So go to the tools panel, then organize. The collector sub panel is already selected. So click the entity selector and choose surfs. Now click on surfs and select all. Our status bar indicates we have 28 surfs selected and we'll move them to the destination component geom by clicking on move. Now all of our surfaces are in the geometry component and its lines turn yellow matching the component color. Next, we'll move all of our shell elements to the center component. We can hit this shortcut for the Organize panel. In the Entity Selector, select Elements and choose By Collector. Check the boxes for components Mid1, Mid2 and End and click Select. Choose your destination component as Center and then Move. So all elements now turn Cyan to match the Center component's color. And it makes sense now to rename our center components as shells. So go to the model tree, right click on it and select rename. Type shells and hit enter on your keyboard. We can also now identify and delete the empty components. So back to the tools panel, delete and select comps. Click Preview Empty and the status bar shows there are three entities empty. We can check which ones are these by clicking on Comps, showing us that they are the Mid1, Mid2 and N. Hit Return to go back and then Delete Entity and the status bar displays that we, they were deleted. Let us also delete those lines we created earlier, change the Entity Selector to Lines Click on Lines and choose All, and then Delete Entity. Reorder your components list just for the sake of organization by going back to the Tools panel, then Reorder. Click on Components and check Geometry, then select and choose Move to Front and hit Reorder. This makes the Geometry component to be the first in the list, but it, its ID hasn't changed yet. Now let's renumber them so their IDs match their positions on the model tree. Back in the tools panel, click on renumber, choose comps in the entity selector, click comps again, 
and all and select. We want it to start with 1, increment by 1, and an offset of 0, so it's alright for us to hit renumber right now. They are numbered from 1 to 3 now, and notice that reordering and renumbering are not necessary steps for you to run your model. They are just for organizational purposes. Uh, let's also create an assembly containing our component shells and rigids. Right click in the model tree, create assembly and name it elements. In the components folder, select both shells and rigids by holding the control key. Click and drag them to the elements assembly and also drag the geometry component to the assemb underline mid assembly and then rename it to assemb underline jump say and we're done. Again, we don't have to deal with assemblies to run our model. And our bumper model has all of its loads and its constraints in the load collector loads. But that is not a good idea because we're later going to need to specify a load collector for the loads, like forces and moments, and another one for the constraints. So create to a load collector by right-clicking again, create load collector, name it constraints, and we see that it too becomes the actively selected load collector in the status bar. We're ready now to move the constraints of the model to their rightful load collector. So go to the tools panel again and organize. In the collector sub panel, select loads, click on loads by configuration. For the configuration, choose const. And for the type, choose SPC. Change this to all as you might not have that constraint display and hit select entities. Choose the destination component as constraints and click move. We can see that our constraint has turned to the color of its load collector and we are fine. So that's what I had to show you today. We're still getting the grip on how to manip manipulate things in HyperMesh. So hang gone guys. Uh, remember to subscribe, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.